So you've just gotten interested in this hobby, mech model kits, and you want to make your kits look the best that they possibly can. Perhaps you want to give them a nice coat of paint. Specifically, you want to airbrush. Well, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the tools that I use, the paints, the miscellaneous tools, the airbrush itself, and the steps so that you can get started on this project. And if you want to take your kits beyond just painting, I've got more videos on my channel to cover that, panel scribing, and all the basics like sanding. In the future, you can expect decaling, weathering, dry brushing, all of the rest. And if that's interesting to you, subscribe now so you don't miss any of it. So you've got your desk, you've got your workspace set up, it's well lit, and now you're wondering what sorts of paints should I use? It does get kind of complicated, but I'll break it down really quickly for you right here. There are three kinds of paints, lacquer, enamel, and acrylic that are commonly used in airbrushing plastic model kits. The ones that I use that you can see here on the table are primarily Mr. Color. Up there in the top right, those are the Tamiyas. Those are acrylic, the Mr. Colors are lacquer, and I do not have any enamel paints besides the panel lining that you see there at the bottom right with the long caps. And straight away, the most important thing I can tell you about the three different paint types is that always make sure to have lacquer on the bottom if you're going to layer paint types. Never place lacquer over enamel or acrylic. So a good way to put that is, I'll reiterate this in future videos as I'm demonstrating painting. The three types of paint are graded in terms of how quote unquote hot they are. That is how likely they are to burn through layers underneath. Lacquer's the hottest, enamel's in the middle, and acrylic is the coolest. The hotter paints will burn through the cooler paints. So lacquer on bottom, enamel on top, acrylic on top of all of that if you must layer different types of paints. Again, this is important. I'll reiterate this in future videos. Keep that in mind. Never let it leave your mind. Now you might be wondering, how do I choose which type of paint that I want to use? For each type of paint, they're graded in two other ways as well. Durability and time to dry and cure. Lacquers are the most durable and they dry and they cure the fastest. Acrylics take the longest to cure. They do dry quickly, about as fast as lacquers, so you can handle them right away, but they'll scratch easily, and thus they're the weakest. Enamels are in the middle. When I was choosing which paint type I wanted to use, I wanted the best finish, so I went with lacquer. And the most popular brand of lacquer paints for airbrushing are Mr. Color Paints by Gun Sangyo. If you want to paint with acrylics, that's fine, or enamels, it's up to your personal preference. The one drawback to these more durable higher quality paints is that they are more toxic, so you need to watch out for your health. And finally, to round out the products to use, the big jars that you see in the background, those are the primers. That's the first layer of paint that you put down on your kit to protect the plastic from the lacquer paint and also to create a surface for the lacquer paint to grip onto better than it does to the plastic surface of the kit. Also, I use for my metal colors, the All Clad 2. Those are the tall, skinny bottles. And in order to protect all of this, once we're done airbrushing, we use a clear coat on top of that. And there are multiple kinds of clear coats. And I'll go over the steps for that when we get there. But for now, we can move on. Now, you also need something to hold the pieces after you've sprayed them down so they can dry without coming into contact with anything and getting their coat messed up. Here I have some alligator clips up there on the white styrofoam and then there's the black alligator clip board. You don't have to buy an actual clipboard. You can simply stick these alligator clips into like a block of styrofoam if you need to keep things on a budget. Now, as I mentioned before, since we are using the very toxic lacquer paints, we need to make sure that we have ample ventilation and protection for our lungs and our eyes. This here is the paint booth. It's an extractor. That's where it sucks air in and paint. So you spray into that and it collects all the paint there so that it's not floating around in the air for you to breathe in later. This paint booth was made by Master Airbrush. It's a generic entry level product, about a hundred bucks. So if you're gonna use lacquer paints, make sure you get an extractor. Still on the topic of health, in addition to the extractor, you want something to protect your lungs as you breathe in. This is a $15 respirator that I got from Home Depot. Straightforward to use, you put it on, it's sealed, no lacquer paint in your lungs. Now, as I started airbrushing, I found that there was constantly particles getting in my eyes, making things sticky, and it was very irritating, so I bought a pair of protective glasses. You may be interested in this as well. I think overall it's a good purchase. Don't want any of those chemicals getting in your eyes. Here's a perfect example of something you don't want to get in your eyes. You're going to be using this a lot. It's going to be splashing around. This is hardware lacquer thinner from Home Depot, seven bucks. Big can, lasts you a long time. You use this to clean your airbrush if you want to change colors or once you're finished. And I will demonstrate how I use this thinner to clean my airbrush later in the video. 
Here's another key part of airbrushing. It's a thinner for the paint that you use. You cannot just pour paint from the jar into your airbrush and start painting. It's gonna clog up the works. You need to thin it down so it runs through smoothly. And that's what this is for. This is also by Gun Sangyo. It's Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. The leveling means that it takes slightly longer to dry. Therefore, the paint, after it's sprayed onto the plastic, has more time to become even, to even itself out. You'll also notice that I've been wearing blue gloves this entire time. These are nitrile gloves, also from Home Depot. Cheap, pack of 50. Gets between your skin and the toxic paint. Bring with them a bunch of other benefits. You're not getting your direct fingerprints on any of the pieces that you touch. I love to wear these when, even when I'm snap building so that I don't get the pieces all greasy with sweat and oil from my skin. Additionally, it also protects the pieces from my fingernails because they're covered. And now, finally, we get to the airbrush itself. This is a mid-range airbrush, a subsidiary of Iwata. Iwata is a famous airbrush brand. Don't need to worry about that quite yet. This is a nice budget airbrush that I got from Hobbytown USA, my local hobby store. Sprays at the finest point, three millimeter patterns. Gravity-fed airbrush. Paint goes in the top, gets siphoned down, brought into the nozzle. You pull the needle back using the trigger here, and paint is released out the front. That cord that you see running down the bottom, that goes to an air compressor. You often have to buy that separately with the hose, and you can adjust the PSI to varying air flows so you can get different paint flows as well. The first airbrush that I started off with was one of the $20 airbrushes off of Amazon, the cheap beginner kit. Really crappy airbrush, lasted me about a paint session before it broke. I did mishandle it, but it was already falling apart. So then I went here and I, I got this one and it was much improved. The trigger is on a spectrum, so depending on how much you pull it back, the amount of paint release can be modulated. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gather up my tools. Here, the Mr. Leveling Color Thinner, I like to put that into the airbrush first. I use disposable plastic pipettes to transfer the fluids into the airbrush. For thinner to paint ratio, I like to go three parts thinner to two parts paint. And as I pointed out before, you always start with primer. Here we have Gun Senyo, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Surfacer 1000. It's a gray color. The 1000 denotes the uh, quote unquote grit of the surfacer. It's the thickness of the individual pigments that will get into inconsistencies in the surface and even them out. There I just did a quick test spray to make sure that flow through the airbrush is good. And there I put two milliliters and then one milliliter for three milliliters of Mr. Color Leveling Thinner. Always give your paints a good shake before putting them in your airbrush. Get the pigment nice and evenly distributed throughout the fluid. And I'm going to go up to two milliliters here and deposit that into the airbrush cup. What I like to do here is I like to suck it back up into the pipette to mix it. This also cleans out the pipette slightly so that it doesn't get gunk deposited inside and I can reuse it for another application. Couple quick test sprays. Now here is a technique called backflow or backwashing. You cover, you create a seal around the front nozzle and you pull the trigger so that the air doesn't go out the front but instead goes back up into the cup and mixes the paint in that way from the bottom up. I have my PSI on my air pressure generator set to 15. Now here we have our piece on the alligator clip, far away from our hands, far away from any other surfaces that it can touch, and we apply about four inches away from the piece, pulling halfway back on the trigger, and always keeping the airbrush moving, never letting it pool in one spot. Now what I'm doing when I get up close like that is I'm spraying only air in order to clean off that part of the piece to get it free of any dust. This way no dust or dirt gets trapped underneath your paint coats and creates inconsistencies in the finished product. Now the only reason why I place the piece down on the surface like that is because I know Mr. Color Lacquer paints dry that quickly. I sprayed it only seconds ago and it's already dry. So I can put it down and know that it won't pick anything up on what you might think would be a, a wet coat of paint, but it's not wet. Now in my experience, Mr. Color Lacquer paints take roughly 20 seconds to dry. So I know that they're safe to handle moments after I've sprayed the coat and I'm free to spray more coats. Now that's because I live in Colorado. It's very dry. It's middle of summer. It's super hot here. Things dry quickly. And I'm going to move on to the next piece. 
and we're going to go on like this, applying our primer to each of the small pieces one by one. Again, making sure we spray light, thin coats over each section before coming back around and reapplying another coat until the primer is evenly distributed across all surfaces. Okay, now all that's left is to show you how to clean up when you're transitioning in colors or when you're finished airbrushing. And in my next video, I will do a paint through of the rest of the pieces so you can have a more demonstration of the techniques applied here. That video will be out Friday. And since I lost my decaling, panel lining, weathering, all that other good stuff, I lost all that video, it's really too bad. I'm gonna have to move on to my next kit and get to those points as fast as I can so I can provide that information for you guys. In the meantime, if you have any questions about those steps, be sure to post them in the comments and I'll make sure to answer them as thoroughly and quickly as I can. I'm here to help you guys. Now, after we've finished with the painting session, it's time to clean up the airbrush. So first thing we do is we spray out all the excess paint or primer inside, and then we go at it with a paper towel and try to get as much of it out as we can before moving on. It's pretty straightforward. We move on to the hardware lacquer thinner, pour that in the cup, swish it around a bit. I like to turn up the PSI to get a more forceful spray, cleaning the nozzle and the cap and the airbrush needle itself more thoroughly. Do a bit of backwashing here and spray it into our cup. That's what that uh, jar there that you see is for. Yep, dab some of the paper towel with a lacquer thinner, run over the airbrush body with it, clean it up as best as we can, and spray it out forcefully until it's empty. And we just keep doing this until it's thoroughly cleaned. I give it uh, three full cups of the cleaning lacquer thinner, backwashing, spraying it out, backwashing, I then take off the nozzle cap, and because that gets quite caked and dirty, I give it a good spraying with a 40 PSI, get all of the primer and excess paint that's stuck in there out and cleaned up, and that's pretty much it for cleaning. It's very rare uh, when I actually do take the needle out for a airbrush breakdown for a more thorough cleaning, and I'll point those out to you guys when we come across them. Really the only material that needs to be cleaned out in that way is when you spray top coat, gloss, and matte. Those are quite sticky, and those really get caked onto the needle and are hard to clean off, so you have to take the airbrush apart and clean it like that. All right, you guys, that's it. That is how you airbrush. Those are all the things that you need to get started, and I wish you the best in your projects. Thank you for your time, and I'll see you in the next video.